Good morning and welcome to today's session of Manage America Radio, our continuing career college exposition webinar series. My name is Bob Martin and I'm with the Manage America Foundation. Joining me in, on today's session of Manage America Radio is my foundation colleague, Lee Doubleday. Lee and I are excited about today's career topic, the overlooked value of technical school certificates sponsored by Universal Technical Institutes or UTI. UTI is this country's leading provider of high quality career focused education at 13 locations nationwide. UTI is also a 20 year sponsor of the Imagine America scholarship and award programs. Having now provided admissions based financial aid to more than 16,000 enrolling Imagine America students. Without taking valuable time from our presenter, let me refer any and all inquiries about the Imagine America Foundation to our website, www.imagine-america.org. Since our beginning in 1999, Imagine America remains a leading sponsor of scholarship aid to enrolling high school students. However, our country faces a serious shortage in certified technicians. We hear from employers in virtually all sections of the country, desperately looking for qualified employees, so we need to do more. Our partner in today's presentation, again, is Universal Technical Institute, and joining us today to discuss in detail the looming technician shortage and how UTI is helping meet this need is Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle is a nationally recognized expert in this area with an extensive K-12 background. But before turning the program over to Dr. Coyle, let me outline today's agenda. Today's session of Imagine America Radio will be 30 minutes maximum, with question and answers at the end of the presentation. All participants can submit questions while the presentation is in session via the Q&A feature or the chat feature in this Zoom meeting. At the end of the presentation, I'll then present any questions offered by the participants. We'll have a hard close at 10.30 a.m. So without taking any more time out of your uh, today's presentation, let me turn today's session over to Dr. Stephen Coyle. Dr. Coyle, the floor is yours. Well, good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Bob and Lee, for that introduction. And um, let's get right to our presentation. I uh, want to spend just a, uh, a couple of minutes talking to you about UTI. Um, uh, we are the leading provider of technicians in the transportation industry. We have 12 active campuses nationwide, 14 campuses total. But now I can tell you officially that as of yesterday, we have now acquired and closed on uh, the uh, MIAT, which is the Michigan Institute of Aeronautic Technology, which has two campuses, one in Michigan and one in uh, Houston, Texan, Texas. And so uh, we're very excited to add those to the family. So that will give us a total of 16 campuses nationwide. The nationwide presence is so important for students going into this career field because it gives them added flexibility and marketability. The, um, you, you'd be hard pressed to walk into a dealership and go UTI and they wouldn't know who you're talking about. We're, we're, our brand is well known across the country. So having that national presence gives our students a distinct advantage over the competition in landing employment. We teach in eight different STEM careers. That's soon to change to 17 STEM careers, but I'll stick with the eight for right now. They are auto, diesel, collision, motorcycle, marine, NASCAR, CNC, and welding. And of course, with the MIT uh, added to that as well, MIAT added to it, that will be, we'll expand into aviation, we'll expand into HVAC, robotics, wind and solar power. So a lot of different uh, areas that, that uh, we weren't in before. Well, what's interesting on this screen though, when you look at those eight here, and like I said, soon to be the 17, you see literally hundreds of other career opportunities within these. For instance, a student says, I love cars. I love to be around cars, but I don't really want to turn wrenches. Is there anything I can do? Absolutely. They could be a, um, a service rider for a dealership. That's who you take your car into when you first come in and they uh, they go over all, everything with you about your car. They assign it to a technician to be worked on. Or you could be a claims adjuster for an insurance company. When you hit a deer, it's easy to see what happened to the outside of the car. But unless you're a trained technician, you wouldn't know to look for the sensors on the inside, the computer components and things on the inside of that car. A trained technician would know to look for those things. So there's there's two examples, and there's, there's just literally hundreds of others, uh, career opportunities available to, um, to students today. 
We have over 35 alliances with manufacturers. Now, there are schools out there that will tell you, oh, yes, we have partnerships with, uh, we have industry partners, that kind of thing. We do too. We have literally hundreds of partners. But these alliances with these manufacturers, this is huge. As I often say, we're not training students to go to work for Jiffy Lube. We're preparing them to go to work for BMW, for GM, Ford, for Porsche, uh, Lexus, these kind of companies. This is who we're training for. And these are strong, stable companies that, uh, that pay very well. So that's why we love the partnership that we have with them. But what I really want to get to today is what I, what I really want to talk about is you and your relationship with your students, with the parents, with your colleagues, and talk to you a little bit about, about the value of associate degree programs and uh, competency-based credentials like uh, degrees and diplomas. First of all, to succeed in the modern economy today, students need skills. Now, when I say skills, you often think about on the left side of the screen, specific technical skills, like how to work on a car, how to work on a truck, a motorcycle, how to weld, how to plumb, how to build a house, all these kind of technical skills. What you may not think about though, are the skills on the right, the general education application skills, because students need those too. What good is it if you can fix a car, but you can't communicate that to the owner of that car? You know, when you first diagnose the problem, then you have to go tell the customer, here's what we found. Here's what's wrong with your car and here's what it will take to fix it. Here, how, here's how much it's going to cost. All those things. You've got to be able to convey to the, uh, to the customer. And the writing skills, because you have to write all this up as well. So we do both. Rather than pit one against the other, we put them both together because we know the value of, of both soft and hard skills and how more important they are to the student. And the bottom line is, this is what employers are looking for. What do you bring to the table you know, that, can, that can help them with, with their dealership? So that's why the, um, the career preparation is so important. Here is a, um, some statistics that might surprise you a little bit. Nearly all certificate programs, 94%, and nearly three out of five associate degree programs are awarded in career-oriented fields. Now, you may think your students are going off to college to get their bachelor's degree or to go on to get their master's degree or whatever. But in reality, these students are going off because they want to get into career-oriented fields. So they're looking for a certificate or diploma program or possibly an associate's degree because they want skills. Now, you know these kids today. These kids are very, they're very much in the now, present. That's why they text. That's why they Snapchat. That's why they Instagram. Emails, not going to happen. That's too slow. They want instant feedback. And so that's why they're looking for these shorter programs. And to go to a college or university where they might be there four to six years, some of your students just say, no, that's just not, that's just not for me. I, I, don't, I don't want any part of that. I want something quicker where I can get into my career field as, as quickly as I possibly can. And along the same lines, about 50% of students taking undergraduate coursework are enrolled in certificate and associate degree programs. Once again, as I just mentioned, you may think your students are going off to get that bachelor's degree somewhere. It, they are not. They are there, they're looking for these, these shorter programs where they can get in, get out, get employed, and start making money. That's what they want to see. You know, they leave our program, they, they're 19 years old, maybe 20. And they're already out in the field doing what they what they love to do. When you look for a technical certificate program, there are three things that you need to look for. First, industry relationships. Second, occupationally focused curriculum. And then finally, employment assistance. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me go through these with you one at a time. Industry relationships. That's what I showed you just a minute ago. Those partners with industry. I just spoke to a group here in Illinois at the Illinois School Counselor Association, and they're, they're talking about 
you know, getting industry involved in their school districts. And that's what we do. Those industry relationships are huge because that's who we're training for. That's who the students are going to work for. Why did students come to school in the first place? Because they want to get into a career that they love, something they want to do. So that, that's why they're here. The second part, occupationally focused curriculum. These students are not into Greek mythology and 20th century world literature and these, these kind of topics. They're just not into that. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that these kids, just, that, that's not what makes, it, makes them tick. They're looking for occupationally focused curriculum. They wanna learn what they need to know to get into their specific career, how to work on a car, how to work on a truck, how to weld, how to plumb, Whatever the case may be, that's what they're looking for. And then the third part, employment assistance. As I said earlier, why are these students going to school in the first place? Because they want to get into their chosen career, their chosen field. And so the employment assistance is huge. That's what we do. We, we don't feel like we're done until we've helped that student to get into that chosen field. You also have to remember these three go hand in hand with each other. Without industry relationships, it's very difficult to do employment assistance. And, you know, what are the employers looking for in employment assistance? They're looking for the occupationally focused curriculum. What skills do you have? What do you bring to the table that can help them at that specific dealership or location? Now, I want to change direction here for just a second and talk to you about a program that we are really excited about. It's called IGNITE Worldwide. IGNITE is a, an acronym, Inspiring Girls Now in Technology Evolution. What this program is doing, it's opening the door for girls to opportunities that they didn't think were available to them before. You know, as, like in our industry with the auto industry, very much male dominated. About 4% of our student population is female. And we would like to change that. So that's why we have partnered with Ignite Worldwide to get more girls excited about STEM opportunities and to show them what those opportunities are that are available to them. Because once again, you don't know what you don't know. So that's why that's very important. I love their, their mantra. It is, you can't be what you can't see. You think about that for a second. When's the last time you saw a female welder, a female carpenter, a female auto technician or a diesel technician. I go on and on. And when you do see a female in there, it's like it's a novelty, like, oh, look, they got a girl working for them. Shouldn't be that way. You know, we want to encourage girls that you can do these things too. But once again, who do they have to look up to? Because as I you know, just mentioned, you can't be what you can't see. They don't have the role models that are out there. So that's why we've been very excited to partner with, uh, with Ignite. Kathy Rogerveller, who is the CEO and founder, created this program in 1998. And um, just recently, got, we just got involved with them. And so we're very excited about getting more females into STEM uh, careers, STEM-related careers. Now, it's a four-part uh, program, I guess you might say. The first one is the panels. What we do is we host these Ignite events at our campus. And we form what's called a um, women in STEM panel. These are all women who are involved in STEM, who have um, who've made their careers in that, those areas. So these girls can talk to them. They can ask them questions. How did you get there? What obstacles did you have to overcome? Did people make fun of you? All, you know, all these questions that girls are wanting to ask and never be able to ask them before. Then the second part, Visit local companies to experience STEM in action. One of the things that you know, we like to bring them to our campus so they can see a true STEM school in action and see what takes place there. Let them experience what goes on there. Then the third part, workshops. How do these girls know what they want to do or like to do if they have never experienced it before? So that's what we wanna do. We wanna give them the opportunity to experience STEM. We, we offer them opportunities to do like the, uh, the welding simulators, um, you know, other STEM type of activities so they can see if they even like it. How do they know if they've never done it before? And then the fourth part is we have them go to conferences where they, um, uh, they get around other girls 
who are interested in these because there's strength in numbers. It's so they don't feel like they're all alone, like they're weird or something because they want to get in STEM. So it's, it's a great opportunity for girls to get to experience STEM on a more personal level. The Ignite Worldwide uh, program has, is gaining uh, recognition and momentum all, all the time. The National Science Foundation recognizes them. The Anita Borg Social Impact Award was given to them. They were recognized by the Department of Education and National Best Practice Award. So get, definitely gaining traction within females. And so that's why we are so excited to be part of that. This is the statistic though that really caught our eye. A study was done in the Seattle schools, 2013 to 2017. 2013, less than 5% of all females were involved in STEM um, careers or, or STEM pathways, I guess you might say. We could identify that because as I mentioned earlier, less than 4% of our student population is female. Within three years, that number jumped to over 50%. That's amazing. But in a way, though, it's not amazing because once again, we're exposing girls to these opportunities. Naturally, a lot of them are going to get excited. They didn't think this is, was an option to them before. And then when they find out it is an option, they, they get excited. Hey, I can do this too. And so this statistic is important because it shows what happens when you give girls a chance. You give girls the opportunity to experience what STEM is all about. One of the things that we like to do is we like to provide resources to help students to meet their goals and their dreams. We partner with, with um, groups like FFA, which I was just there last week at their national convention. 55,000 were there, amazing event. We also partner with Hot Rogers of Tomorrow, this uh, Skills USA, Top Tech Challenge. These are all student programs where we offer scholarships, to help students to realize their dreams and their goals to getting into um, uh, STEM related careers. We also work with foundations like Imagine America. Imagine America has been a strong partner of ours for over 20 years. And they uh, offer scholarships for our students to be able to attend school. And of course they make things like this possible, the webinars, so that I can reach out to educator, educators like yourself. But another, another area that we like to um, get involved with is industry. Uh, our newest partner is Agco, and I was just with them last week at the FFA convention. We had, we had one of the busiest booths out there. They brought uh, three, they brought a Rogator, they brought a couple of their tractors out. I mean, so students could see, so they could experience what these vehicles are like now, that these are high-tech machines. And uh, so this also gave students an opportunity to see how education and industry work together. So through these and, and other scholarship and grant programs, we try to give resources to students so that they can make their dreams come true and reach out to get the, um, the educated, education they're wanting for their career. We do scholarships. We have over $15 million in scholarships that we, that we offer. But I don't know about you, but we have a lot of difficulty getting students to fill out scholarships. They just don't want to do it for some reason. So one of the things that we've developed is our TRIP package, which is Tuition Reimbursement Incentive Program. This program has proven to be huge to students. I guess it's because they have a goal that they're working towards, or the, the light at the end of the tunnel, if you might want to, want to call it that. But this program could be anywhere from $10,000, $15,000 up to $40,000 in a, a, some kind of a package that these dealers offer to our graduates. It, it offers things like student loan repayment assistance. Like uh, one company, they give $420 a month on top of their salary that they can use towards their student loans. Hiring incentive packages, tool purchase assistance, up to a couple thousand dollars. Sign-on bonuses you know, tenure bonuses. If they stay a certain amount of time, they can get an additional amount of money. So what the bottom line is, these dealerships, they're all competing for the same students and they've got to make themselves stand out from all the other dealerships. So how do they do that? They offer these packages to 
incentivize students to want to come work for them. And in return, they get a lot of their education paid for. Now there is a catch. This isn't going to go there just to everybody. You've got to earn it. You've got to be, you know, considering one of the tops because that's who these guys want to hire. They want the, the best they can get their hands on. So they're not just going to give these programs out to just everybody. You know, they're just, they want to make sure this student has met the requirements for professionalism, for attendance, for grades, all those things together. And then they have the opportunity to get um, um, a lot or all of their education paid for. So there are two takeaways here today that I want to talk to you about. The first one, high school counselors and educators can strengthen all post-secondary education pathways, including certificate programs. You know, we have to recognize that these programs are no longer plan B. They're no longer the backup plan. Oh, well, if it doesn't work out for you to become a teacher, you can always work on cars. Oh, if that, you know, that program at the medical school doesn't work out for you, you can always be a plumber, you know, like that. That's not like that anymore. These are highly trained, highly technical individuals. You know, they're, they, they're working on this equipment now that is so technologically advanced, it's mind boggling to see. So to think that, well, they can do that, you know, if they, if they can't do anything else, they can do that. That's just, just not true any longer. And we have to treat our students that way. We have to respect what they want to do. Rather than try to talk them out of something, encourage them. Let them know that, hey, it's okay if you want to be a, a carpenter or if you want to be an auto technician or a motorcycle technician. That's okay because those are in demand and you can make very good money in those fields. So we can't make them feel ashamed for the simple fact that this is something that they want to do. And then the second takeaway today is higher education leaders are instrumental in enabling students to acquire education beyond high school. Students need training of some type. We can't, uh, now some of your students, they're going to go on out of high school and get a job and they might be successful. But like these mentorship programs that, that we have, these internship programs, they're only as good as that mentor. If you get into a program that does not have a good mentor, you're not gonna learn anything. You're gonna be right where you were. So it's important to have skills because that's what employers are looking for, skills. What do you bring to the table? And the more skills you bring to the table, the more marketable you are, the higher salary you can command because you do have those, those uh, technical skills under your belt. And as I said before too, along with the, the hard skills, the soft skills, the communication skills, being able to, to, to write well, to, to, uh, to uh, communicate to the customer. Those are all important too. So those are really the two biggest takeaways that I want you to get out of this. And then finally, I'm a retired educator. I know what you guys do on a daily basis. You know, it's, um, it's amazing the job you have the, with the workload that you have. Um, it's amazing what you get done. We know you're already talking to students about the economy and, and uh, job demand. We know you're talking to them about, um, about STEM, about career pathways, about career readiness. We know you're doing those things. What do we want to do? We want to partner with you to help you with that. We offer uh, open houses at our school. In fact, I was just talking to Tracy Kilby, who is the regional admissions director at our Sacramento campus. He wanted me to mention that on November 13th, they'll be hosting an open house at the campus. We invite students, but also their parents and anyone else that wants to come in. Uh, all of you are invited to come in, you know, to see what, what UTI is about. But we can also come to you. We have a truck and trailer so we can do STEM demos at your, um, at your, um, uh, your campuses. We do workshops, we can do those live, we can also do them virtually, where we come in and talk to your students about career pathways, career readiness, talk to them about the economy, what they can expect to make, how much they need to make in order to be able to survive. And all these are free, but it's a way for us to reach out to students. And when I say students, I mean all of your students, not just the interested only, because all students need to hear this message, just like you all are hearing my message to know what is out there, what is available, what you need, need to be thinking about. Because some students, yes, they are gonna to go to the college or university and that's okay. We wanna help them to reaffirm that. 
but some of your students are more project-based learners. So we wanna help them with that too. And then we'll talk to them about scholarship opportunities and things that are available to them. Once again, I do professional development um, uh, for, stu uh, for uh, school districts. So if you have a need for any kind of professional development, please feel free to reach out to me. Once again, it is free. There's no charge to that at all. I'd love to work with you in your school district. And then finally, I'd just like to close by saying thank you for spending part of your day with me. I hope that you gleaned some uh, tidbits that can help you with your, uh, in your respective schools. Um, I wish you the best of luck for the rest of your school year, and thank you so much. All right, thanks, Dr. Coyle. We're now going to open this up for the Q&A portion of our presentation. I'm also going to throw up a poll question. If you would like somebody to email you more information about presenting similar information on STEM careers to your students, please indicate so on in the poll so that we know who to reach out to. Um, Dr. Coyle, now this person wants to know about whether or not UTI is federally, um, can students can receive federal financial aid in order to attend uh, your institution? Yes, we are Title IV funding. So that means we have our students fill out a FAFSA to see if they qualify for financial aid, and then we'll help them to put together a financial aid package um, along with uh, not only what you get from the federal government, but also what we have to offer in the way of uh, scholarships and grants to help make their education more affordable. Okay, and um, this person wants to know if they should contact you or go to the website uh, to look for you know, the Sacramento campus in order to uh, reach out to a representative, which, which way should they do that? Well, they can do both. Um, I, would, I would suggest they, you know, they can go to our, our website, uti.edu, and uh, they can pull up a box and make an inquiry that's stating, hey, I'd like to, I'm interested in hosting a workshop, or we'd like a field trip, or so, whatever it is you're looking for, and then that will go to the, to the rep that's in your area. But if, if these are for you, just reach out to me. You've got my email address. Uh, email, email me. Many counselors do that instead. They just ask me to set it up for them, which I will be happy to do for you. Yeah, and I will include Dr. Coyle's um, email in the uh, confirmation that I send out to you to likely tomorrow with the recording of this presentation so you can reach out to them directly from that. Hey, Dr. Coyle, this is Bob. Um, uh, the last question that we got here is uh, has to do with comparisons with community and technical colleges, uh, cost comparisons and program comparisons link the program. I I'm assuming is what they're what they're referring to. Can you address that a little bit, please? You know, I'd be shocked if we didn't get that question because I get it all the time, and it's a fair question. And so I you know, I would just submit to everyone here: look for three letters R O I, return on the investment. When you look on the outside, you say, well, gosh, this school's tuition is this and this school's tuition is that. You're only getting part of the picture. You need to look at everything that that school offers. I, I look at three areas specifically. Number one is the length of time you're going to be in school. At a community college, you're going to be there two to three years. That, that's just it. They, you know, they take summers off. They do spring breaks, all those things. So it's going to take four to six semesters to get through. At UTI, you're looking at nine to 17 months. We don't take summers off. We don't do spring breaks because the industry doesn't. So we push you straight through into the program. The second are the alliances with the manufacturers. Sure, schools will tell you that they have industry partners. And they do. They're not lying to you. But these alliances with the manufacturers, this is who's going to be hiring you when you're done. We actually have contracts with these companies to work with them, to get them technicians that they need. So that is a huge part of this, you know, for them, our students to get that manufacturer specific training, it gives them more marketability. And then finally, the trip program that I just talked about, it's huge. I mean, potentially a student could go free, but like I said, there is a catch. They've got to work hard while they're in school. You know, they've got to have good professionalism, good attendance, good grades. And then these companies are gonna select you, but it's a great way to make your education affordable. Hey, Dr. Coyle, let me, let me very quickly uh, go through a couple of logistical matters before um, we close off today's uh, re uh, webinar with you. Uh, first of all, the foundation, we've recorded a session that we're going to forward the recorded version of it to all registrants. Uh, secondly, uh, we have placed the foundational places on our website, which is www.imagine-america.org with very specific download instructions. Uh, Lee, my colleague here, is going to uh, be sending out a survey 
about this call to give us some, some feedback on it and also um, possible the topics or, uh, or timing of the day that, that would work better for you. But before closing, I really want to thank the, the educators that took the time out of their very busy schedule uh, to join us today on today's call. i also like to thank Dr. Coyle for doing another outstanding job in the presentation and encourage any and all of our participants to contact him directly with the contact information he provided earlier uh, on any questions regarding UTI, uh, STEM careers, women in STEM careers, uh, enrollment, whatever it may be. He's a, he's a fountain of, in, of information. On behalf of the Imagine America Foundation, Lee Doubleday and myself, thank you and goodbye.